Hi, I am, I'm Jamie. I'm the creative director here at Fire Clay Tile. Uh, I have led our creative, our product, our marketing efforts since 2013. Um, I tend to choose to stay behind the scenes, as does much of my team. Um, but we are always kind of here in the background, focused on bringing you products and experiences um, that you want. And of course, we're, we're always working to make sure that Fireclay looks good. Uh, a little bit about me, for those of you who don't know me, is that I got started working in the green building industry about 15 years ago. On that path, I've served in sales roles, merchandising roles, and marketing roles. Um, and Fire Clay Tile has actually been with, with me since day one of that journey when I uh, kind of cut my teeth selling uh, Fire Clay Tile as one of, one of the Fire Clay dealers many years ago. Today, we are going to introduce you to our new desert collection colors and share an in an activity that's intended to give you a glimpse into the art of glaze making. We always intend to share a more tactile experience with our clients and under normal circumstances, we would be with you in your office, but since we can't be with you in person right now, we figured that this would be the next best thing. This palette of eight new colors is the brainchild of our cross-departmental product team, where we begin exploration, sort of asking ourselves a lot of questions about where we might have gaps in our assortment, what our customers are asking for, are there things that we are continually customizing? Once we answer those questions, we find a, a source for inspiration that kind of uh, keeps us aligned, keeps us honest during the development process. This particular palette was inspired by a trip that Kaylee on our marketing team took with her sister to Utah. And a lot of the beautiful imagery that you see in our marketing materials is a product of that trip. I'm going to get you started on the activity that we've included with your samples. And your rep is going to share more information about the creation story of the colors, as well as more of that practical product information. So take a minute to grab some water. Um, hint, I like to have two cups of water. That's totally up to you, not a requirement. Um, and grab a paper towel and I will meet you for our color mixing demonstration. We're really glad that you're here with us today um, and we hope that you have fun. Okay, let's get started. Quickly, I'm gonna walk you through what's included in the kit that we shipped you. Uh, first and most important, of course, is the colors of the desert collection. We're gonna work on matching these colors today as part of our activity. You can set those off to the side. You want them close by for matching purposes. We've got this uh, cover page here that has a lot of product information in it. Uh, your rep's gonna go through all of that with you so you can set that off to the side. We've got this desert art studio guide that walks you through the steps we're about to go through. If you need a reference at any point in the presentation today, this is a good thing to have uh, on hand. Some inspiration, we've got some activities for you to do later, such as postcards that can be painted. They're actually designed to be mailed if you can get your hands on a stamp. And then we have this paint by number, which we have not prescribed the color number pairing. We're leaving that up to you. So once you get comfortable mixing your colors, any colors that you want to include in this, go for it. Uh, you can associate a color with a number and then start painting to unveil what we've got hidden in these triangles here. This color wheel is what we're primarily gonna focus on today. This is where we're going to paint our matches from the desert collection. We don't need this quite yet, but you want it handy. And then we've got uh, some watercolor paper. So you have a sheet that has a stamp on it that says paper palette with a spot for each of your watercolors. Um, mine doesn't have that, but they're the same. And then you've got a backup page just in case you need it. We've also included these liquid watercolors in blue, red, and yellow, as well as a paintbrush. Those we obviously need now. Um, I would suggest that you get some, you definitely need some water. I, 
I like to use, I like to have two waters handy just in case I'm moving from a dark color to a light color. It's nice to have that extra rinse. And then you're also gonna want a uh, paper towel handy. So we're gonna start by getting our paints onto our paper palette here. So if you've never worked with liquid watercolor before, uh, be warned, it's very concentrated. If you get it on anything, uh, your hands, your furniture, your pets, uh, it'll get everywhere. So be sure to, to wipe it up quickly. Um, it's again, very concentrated. So a little bit goes a long way. We're just squeezing out about a pea size amount of paints onto this paper palette. Uh, you, it doesn't take much pressure, especially when you first open these tubes of paint. Um, a little bit of pressure goes a long way. It's, it's not like squeezing a tube of, uh, of toothpaste. So we're gonna get our blue, our red, and our yellow down here. Uh, I wish I would have left myself a little bit more space between colors there, but that's okay. Um, and now we're going to, we're gonna start by creating a wash of each of these primary colors. And then I'll show you an example of what our warm up activity is gonna be. So the first thing you need to do is just get some water on that brush. Couple tips about the paintbrush. This is a round brush. So the tip actually has a really nice fine point if you don't put a lot of pressure on the brush. One of the best ways to control pressure is to actually hold the brush uh, properly. It's not, it's not a pencil, you're not writing with it. This wider part of the brush here is where you're intended uh, to hold from and a little bit of pressure again goes a long way. So grab some water. These, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna paint just a line underneath of each of these dollops of color that we've put down. You can, you can definitely get some good pressure going there because you want a nice wide swath of water. Uh, once you get that water on the paper, dip back in your water and then you're gonna go, just touch the edge of your paint and pull it towards you. It is hypnotizing to watch the pigment move down into the water. Uh, once you've got one color done, you can just move down the line. Now we've got our washes of color started. So, what we are going to do, just to give you an example from earlier, um, this of course is an example of all of our secondary colors being mixed. We're gonna focus just on this range of purple hues and that's because there's a lot of correlation, especially in uh, these warmer shades and the lighter tints to the desert collection. So we're gonna talk through color mixing using this range of colors, and then I'll walk you through how you uh, move those over to the color wheel. So just, um, just so that you're prepared, we're essentially mixing our colors on this top row here, and then we're creating tints by adding more water to each of these additional rows. So that's gonna give us a lighter shade of each color. Um, and help us to sort of get a, get a different read on the colors that we've mixed. So we start this process just simply with blue. So we're gonna take our blue um, and just, you may have, we did not, we were unable to ship the exact same shades of each color. So it's possible that you have a different shade of blue than what I'm using here. So if your matches aren't looking exactly the same, that's totally fine. Uh, this is, we're, we're going for the, uh, uh, the principle here, not the exact match. So we're gonna just paint our, paint a nice dark square of our pure blue. Um, and then we're gonna grab a little bit of water and we're gonna grab a little bit of what we just painted in that top square. This is about a three quarter of an inch square. Um, and we're gonna paint our next, I need more, I need more pigment in there. So I'm just gonna grab it from where I've painted um, this darker square above. 
we're gonna paint our next uh, tint. I'm gonna add even a little bit more in there. There's kind of a lot of water in this one. And then from here, I'm just gonna move straight down into my lightest square, which could be a little bit lighter. So I'm just gonna grab some of that clean water could still be even a little bit lighter. So I'm gonna tap off my brush, grab a little bit more clean water. There we go. So now we've got a lighter tint of this pure blue. So now it's time to start mixing. We are going to start with these cooler shades of purple. So we're gonna lay down a blue square first. So again, just paint that nice blue square and we're gonna start adding red. So all of our mixing is happening on this first row here. Once we've got our color mixed, then we'll start to add a little bit of water to make our tints. So I've got my blue down there, I'm gonna clean my brush off and then I'm gonna go grab some red. The blue is much more uh, saturated, much more intense than the red, so it's gonna take more red to the blue ratio to actually shift the color. This first, uh, this first mix though, of course, is the is the bluest of the purples that we're gonna make, the coolest of the purples. Um, so it doesn't actually take much red. I'm actually pretty happy with that mix right there. So I've mixed in this top square. Um, the paint is pretty good as long as you're not using too much water it'll stay within this square pretty well. Um, and you can actually, this is watercolor paper, so it's pretty hardy. You can do, you can actually scrub around with your brush. Don't put too much pressure. You're just trying to move the pigment around. You're not trying to really scrub it and mix it. Um, but this paper can can hold a lot of, uh, of water and a lot of, um, of action uh, from mixing. So I'm happy with this color. I'm gonna go ahead and just move down here to my next square and just not add any more pigment. There's still a lot of water and there's still a lot of paint in my brush. So I'm just going to go down to this next middle square. Now for my lightest square, I am gonna dip into a little bit of water. Again, there's still a lot of of pigment in my brush. So I don't really need to grab any more. If I did, I could dip into this top square where I was mixing uh, because there's plenty of paint up there to, to play around with. All right, so now we're going to essentially add more red and then more red um, to get to our, uh, our next hues of purple. We're adding increments of red until we get back to that pure red. Um, so we're gonna keep on mixing, and then once we get to the red side, I'll explain what we sort of change up there. All right, now that we've kind of hit this sort of like middle range purple that might be a little bit more red than I intended, uh, we're gonna move towards the red side of the spectrum. And once we do that, we're gonna start our base mixing square with red. And we're gonna add small amounts of blue at a time because again, that blue is super powerful. A little bit goes a long way. Um, so we're going to get down a nice uh, base square of red and then we're essentially going to follow the same process but this time it's the reverse where we're adding uh, blue to a red square instead of red to a blue square. Um, and then once you are happy with the mix, it's the same, same that we've been doing. You just add a little bit uh, more water or you can just paint straight from this 
uh, this top square that you've mixed, which is my preference. I like to just move straight down to that middle square, um, which typically works because there's, there's still pigment in your brush and enough water uh, to carry it. So we'll get that middle square and then I'm gonna grab a little bit of water to get this lightest uh, tint down here. Hmm, that's funny, these two. Sometimes it's funny the way that, uh, the way that the lighter shades wind up drying. It's not always, just like glaze making, it's not an exact science. Um, so now we're gonna essentially continue this process until we get to our pure red. Okay, so now that we've got our uh, range of purple hues mixed, we can, uh, the best thing to do next is to kind of take a look at your desert collection colors and see what you think might be a close match because these will give you a good sort of jumping off point. So this is Mesa um, and there's definitely not anything that's an exact match here, but I could see where this center mix could potentially with a little bit more water start to actually a lighter tint that is um could actually start to really closely resemble mesa now these are glazes so there's some of them are more translucent than others this being one so the clay body is actually showing through the glaze so we're never going to get a perfect match um, but we can certainly come close so once you're happy um, with, with where your colors are at, we're going to uh, pick a color. So in this case, I'm gonna just go ahead and use this square here uh, to add into our color wheel. Um, how you paint this color wheel is totally up to you. I've, I have essentially dropped the darkest uh, shade into the center ring and then we're moving out towards the lighter shade one of these will probably be a match to the glaze color you could do this however you want if you want to mix it up if you want to put different colors in different sections it's totally fine there's no there's no right or wrong way um I have enough paint here there's two things you can do if you feel like you have enough paint here to move to your color wheel go for it um, if you feel like you need more paint and you can tell because it will still have that sort of glossy wet appearance um, if you feel like you need more paint you've essentially created your formula so you're adding you have an idea of how much blue versus red was involved in each of these mixes and so you can kind of go back this one's like right in the center so it should have been a fairly balanced mix of blue and red so I could go back and replicate that by doing the same process so starting with my blue square and adding red until I get to a similar color now I feel like I've got enough paint here so I'm actually just going to grab um, some water and re-wet this square a little bit Give it another nice mix. And then I'm just gonna come over here to my color wheel. This color wheel is not watercolor paper, so it will handle differently. The color will even look a little bit different, um, but that's that's okay. Uh, it's not is the best at keeping what we would call a wet edge, so it's not a bad idea what I'm doing is I'm just dropping down a little bit of water to kind of get things um, moving here. And then I'm gonna come back in with my paint. Um, see if I can remember which one I'm pulling from. And you can always add a little bit, this is why it's nice to have that clean water handy. You can add a little bit more, I'm sorry, that's my puppy. <laughs> really lapping it up 
Um, you could always add a little bit more water. This paper doesn't, again, it doesn't hold water quite as well though. Um, so you don't wanna go over each section too much. The nice thing about the watercolor paper is that we can uh, sort of do those scrubbing motions, really mix on the paper. That doesn't work quite the same on this paper. So you wanna be a little bit more careful about uh, how many strokes and how much water goes onto the page. Um, I think it's quite beautiful though, because it winds up having this more organic sort of look to it get a little bit more variation. So the idea is that as you match the colors, you're filling in these sort of pie shapes on the color wheel. Um, again, there's no rules. Do with this what you want. If you want to just keep mixing colors on your paper because it's very, uh, it's a good way to zen out, please by all means go for it. Um, I'm going to hand this over to your rep. Our, our intention is that you just keep painting while we keep talking to you about these colors, their application, um, opportunities for install, all that kind of good stuff, um, suitability. Have fun. Uh, your rep will take it from here. Thanks so much for joining us today. It was, it was great to paint with you.